Hey everyone, in this video I'm gonna start by tackling how you should learn progressive web apps. Now I know all of us use front-end frameworks at work or in real life projects, but if you really want to learn progressive web apps and if you really want to understand how they work, I definitely recommend you set your front-end frameworks aside so that you can learn progressive web apps from scratch and then once you have a solid understanding you can just apply everything you learned on your front-end framework of choice. So in this video series, we will build together a progressive web app that is extremely simple and it's going to be from scratch without any framework. It's only going to be one page, not a single page app, just simply one page because I want to make sure that you understand the basics of progressive web apps. We're going to build an attendees app that simply lists a set of users that we're going to get from an API. We're going to start coding in a second, but first I want to focus on something extremely important, which is the app shell. If you open any native app, you notice that in the first 200 milliseconds, the only thing you see is the application shell or app shell. And that's just the main user interface of the application without any content or without any data. So this is a very common pattern that you see in native apps. And we're going to do the same thing when we build our progressive web apps. So let's get started. So to get started with our app, I've got three files and they're all empty. index.html, app.js and app.css. And inside the index.html, I'm going to start with a typical boilerplate and call my app attendees. And at the end, I'm going to load the script. And that's going to be simply app.js. And then I'm going to start building the application shell. And this is the main part of the user interface of my application that always needs to be there and needs to load very quickly. So that's going to include the header, which I'm then going to style. And I put all the styles for the app shell inlined in the HTML because I want to give them full priority. I want them to be there before the browser gets to the HTML. And of course I have to reset the margin on the body and I'll give it a background color of a certain gray. And now you see the default font being used here is Times New Roman, which is definitely not a good idea. So I'm going to paste this font here, which allows me to use the system font on, on the browser. So in that case, I'm using San Francisco because I'm on a Mac. So let's go back over here. In the body, I paste this one here. And this is going to be font family. So this one is for iOS to use San Francisco. And this is for Firefox to use San Francisco. This one is for Windows. This one is for Android, etc. And I'll make a couple of adjustments, like making the padding a bit bigger and uh, the font size. Let's do a 22 pixels. All right, so this is our application shell. Then I'm going to fetch the list of users from this sample API, which is over here, and it returns to me a list of users. So let's go ahead and write the fetch code behind it. And I convert the response to JSON, and then I get the data, and let's add a console log just to make sure everything's working fine. And this is our data over here. Now let's loop over this data, data dot for each. We've got one user. And then for every user here, we're going to get a user dot name. And then we also need the user dot email. And then I'm going to simply inject all of this inside a div with an ID attendee. So inside attendees, let's go ahead and grab a reference to this and then save it. Let's uh, construct the HTML. So let's do let HTML equals empty string and then HTML we add to it. I'm going to use template strings over here and let's put them in a card. So card and in the card we're going to have this as strong and maybe an m dash. Then we interpolate user email and then username. And then finally, after the loop, we just simply do attendees.innerHTML equals uh, HTML. And let's give it a shot. All right, this is working. We just need to work on the styles of, uh, of the card. So let's go ahead and add the, the styles of the card. And let's give it a box shadow. And let's do margin 20 anyway the border radius and you see because the header is fixed we have to hide we have to add like an additional margin top and uh, since we just have an attendees here I'm just going to do it on attendees let's do a margin top all right so now we've got the list of users over here 
And that's pretty much our app. It's gonna be very simple. I'm just gonna adjust the M dash, doesn't look nice. And put this in the div, and this one too. All right, now finally I wanna remove the margin top of the H2 and the card. So card H2, and then do margin top zero. Alright, so this is our basic app that we're going to use throughout this uh, video series. But what I want to show you and what's really important, if I go to the network tab and I simulate offline, so if I go offline and I reload the page, it just doesn't work. And this is exactly what we'll be building in the next few videos. We want to make this work offline. And in the videos afterwards, we're going to make this look like a decent progressive web app that you can add and launch from the home screen. So that was it for today. You can find the completed source code in the GitHub repository below in the description. If you have any questions, let me know so I can answer them in a future video. And don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell so that you know every time I release a new video about this series. Ciao!